So we're on. Okay, so getting into flow around money. Um, well, getting to, into flow around money, what creates, what creates uh, fear and resistance and not being in a flow state is if the ego tracks anything. Uh, I don't know if people, if the ego identifies or tracks anything, and whatever, whenever the ego tracks anything or identifies with anything, it means it's meaningful or important or it has special significance to the ego. So usually things like money is one of the things within the collective, within the collective of our society, like money is like a worshipped as the source of everything. You know, if you suddenly see like a hundred pounds is missing from your bank account, most people will be upset. Or if you suddenly win the lottery, most people will be jumping up and down. So, um, so in order to retain the flow state, you, you need to make it totally meaningless. Uh, and also you need to cancel all the, all the negative belief systems. So we do, in this group, we do, uh, I cancel my belief that, that money is important, I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold money. I cancel my belief um, that if, uh, if I haven't got enough money in my bank account, I won't be able to survive, I'm an infinite being. Or lesson 14 of A Course of Miracles would be, um, uh, God did not create money as the source of my survival, so it is not real. Or God did not create uh, my, the need for my boss's approval to survive, so it is not real. Or God did not create, uh, God did not create uh, incompetence in my financial management skills, so it is not real. So you just can't see everything that your ego is coming up with, like around money, or around your boss, around your work, you want to cancel all those limiting, because those limiting beliefs, if you hold limiting beliefs around money and finances and everything, or if you project that the source of survival is on money, or is on your boss, or is on your work, or is on your thinking, if you do any of those things, then you'll have, to that extent, you'll feel more resistance, more stuckness, and more fear around the situation. When you make it, when you make it, as you make it meaningless, um, what you'll find is you'll start to access higher spiritual states. And in those spiritual states, there, you know, um, a lot of people in this group will have experienced flow states. And when you're in flow states, you don't have fear-based thinking. And you find that everything mystically happens automatically, and, and you don't get thoughts like you won't be provided for, or everything won't work out well, and everything. So, now, those states happen, but if you, as soon as you're picking up thoughts like I won't have enough money or this will go wrong or I might get fired, then you, you're out of those flow states immediately. So you have to like start writing down. If you've got like a lack of flow around money, I would like to, like uh, people who are familiar with 12 steps know, know that you do inventory, but I would say you'd, do, you'd write down a beliefs inventory, you know, around what are your belief systems, you know, like money doesn't grow on trees, or if I have money I'll be evil, or all people with money are bad people, or it's good to be poor, or, or um, you know, I always struggle with paying the rent on time, or I, or, you know, I always, you know, I'm unlucky with money. Whatever the, th whatever the thoughts are that go on with you, or you want to, like, right, if something keeps popping into your mind, you know it's a belief. You know, or, oh, this has happened, I was expecting this to happen with money, and it's happened again. So you want to cancel that out. Also, if there's a lot of, um, if you have like huge shocks around money, like suddenly you, get, you, you suddenly get a huge bill through the door or something, uh, you can do feel the feelings or the observer on that. You can also do, um, cancelling beliefs is really good to get out the core beliefs, but you can apply the other exercises. There's a lot of fear around money. Just sitting and feeling out that fear, processing out the emotions that surround that, or going into the observer. You can also, if there's stuff with the money, you can use any of those tools, counting beliefs, feeling feelings, or trying to be, try and go into the observer of that which is like stuck around money. Is that which is observing my fear around money, if I go to the observer of being the observer of that, is the observer afraid of losing money? So usually the observer, the observer is not, not afraid of losing money, he doesn't care about money. So... Um, can I ask something quickly yep. that, that ties in with that? Why is it so easy, so easy to do one thing and, you know, and one belief system or, or be neutral around something and then not the other? Yeah. Why is it that, why is oh. it so much easier? It comes so naturally. I'll give you a quick example. My son went for a sleepover with one of his mates, he's only nine, yep. last night. 
I never thought about her. I never thought if he, that he was was he okay. I trusted he was. He was looked after adults. He was safe. And my partner was panicking. Where is he? Oh, look at his foot. It's empty. Well, and I was just looking at him, saying, "What's the problem? I don't, I don't understand it." Complete neutrality without trying. And I was like, "I wish I could be like this with everything." Yeah, that's that's yeah. it. It's not the the question isn't specifically around money. It's yeah. about being able to apply the same neutrality you have yeah. with some issues, or or even to remove the word neutrality, the same faith you have mm. with some issues, and then transfer that to another issue. Mm. Yeah. Because faith doesn't seem to be unconditional. It seems to depend on what we're used to in our backgrounds a lot of the time. Mm. Well, if you, when you, you know, in one area where you have a lot of negative beliefs, if you just, if you just make all of those beliefs meaningless or neutral, mm. then you see it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. When you have, when you've got negative beliefs or projections in one area, like if one person has got beliefs like I'm always unlucky with money, then all their experience as well with money is that they're always unlucky. Mm. So when you tell them to cancel your belief, they go, well, all my references are that it's always been bad with money. Now, if you, if you start, if you totally eradicate all the beliefs you had around money, then you would no longer, it would no longer track. You would no longer be obsessing around those thoughts. And then you'd start to get new experience that, oh, when I'm in these flow states, money always arrives and there's enough money yeah. and there's always problems. So, so it's like you have to do... The cancelling of the stuff, and then you're free of the, the fear, and then you find everything works out when you're free of all those negative beliefs. I think what could be level. tricky now is like I could say, and I'm going to use a couple of examples sure. to try to get this into the perspective. I could say, for example, I cancel all my beliefs around money. Yeah. It doesn't fill the bank account. So obviously, there's an attachment there by cancelling those beliefs. Somebody doesn't suddenly go, oh, here you are, I have a thousand pounds in the bank account. It doesn't. It, on a material level, it doesn't recognise a solution. Now, what I'm, I'm going to try to relate that in something I don't have a problem with, just to just to be contrary in a way. Yeah. So, if I was to go, oh, I cancel my belief in coughs and colds, I cancel my belief in sore throats, I cancel my belief in whatever, asthma. Uh, um, that person could still go away and they could still have asthma and they could still have coughs and colds, um, so they can apply it in that way. They're like, well, all this cancelling. I've still, I've got so, like I said, I've got so much evidence yeah. here, so much material, physical evidence. How can I cancel something that isn't a belief? It's an actual physical thing that's in front of me. Oh well, you know, the, well the thing is, money is a, uh, you could say, is a constructed idea. Um, but the source of survival, uh, you don't have to put it on money, but the source of survival yeah. is is uh, the, the spiritual vibration. Yes. So the universe yeah. can bring things, not necessarily in the form of money, but when you're in a high state of spiritual connection, the universe will provide everything that's needed in some form. I mean, it may, you know, like if you've got a script to the meet, you know, like how do I get money? But, you know, if you need shelter, if you need food, or you need whatever it is that the universe wishes for your highest good, that will come. Uh, but it's not, uh, as soon as you let go, because it's an artificial projection of the ego that you need these little notes for your survival, or for prosperity even, or even for abundance, because the universe can provide things in a multitude of ways, which doesn't necessarily mean, as you let go of your belief systems, because the ego projects, well, I need this many banknotes mm -hmm. at the end of the month for my survival, but sometimes when you let go of that and you go into a flow state, the universe will give you what you need in miraculous, like I'll give a, I'll give a story with one of my spiritual teachers, Muji. So, uh, this is uh, so he. I would go to his spirit. He used to be in Brixton about 18 20 years ago. I would see him every Sunday, spiritual teacher of enlightenment. It does a bit like Eckhart Tolle. Uh, and you know, I remember once I was sitting there and he'd have a little donation pot outside, you know, in the corridor where people could leave money or not leave money. And that's what he'd do. And he'd live in a tiny council flat, we'd all be squashed. And I remember one, and, uh, and I, was, I was chatting with one of the girls after the group, and she said, Oh, I had. I had run out of money and I told Muji. And so he just went into his donation part and just gave her some notes. That's how much of an attachment he had to that little donation thing. He, did, he had no attachment to money whatsoever. And even if, whatever little he gave, he would, would happily give it to someone who said they didn't have money. Uh, uh, and if I can just quickly, quickly finish. I remember, and then he was doing that, and then suddenly he was getting these huge events. And then one day somebody came up to him and said, oh, I really love your work, and I have this land in Portugal. 
and you know, I'd love to give it to you so you can have your own ashram. And then he had all these volunteers, and it wasn't because anyone, he worked for it. It was like the universe was providing like a whole piece of land, loads of volunteers. And it wasn't through him getting millions of pounds. It was like the uni when, you, when you let go of your attachment to things, the universe has a way of bringing everything that's needed for that expression to go forth. Now that's a bit of a dramatic example, but it just is a thing of letting go of your beliefs or letting go of how you need the stuff to arrive to you in a certain format and letting even that go and then see what comes in from, from the universe. Go on, sorry. No, I was going to recount a little story, but it's probably better when you're not filming, it's probably better for another. <laughs> okay. um, it's just I know, I know somebody who does these alternative spiritual events um, yeah. advertising through Meetup and one of them, and I, I mean some people may have even heard of the guy, I'm not going to use his name but he runs these things, he calls them synchronicity walks yeah. and on that he, he goes out with a, a pair of dice and set of playing cards and a little spinny thing mm. and, he, and he determines where you're going to go just by rolling the dice and, mm. and, and, he, and he charges a couple of quid for this and he usually gets about, I don't know, anything from 10 to 20 people turn up and at one point he's spun this thing and he's point and he's pointed straight towards this homeless guy. Mm -hmm. And he's like, Well what's the where's the synchronicity in that? And he goes, I tell you what, instead of paying me, give all your money to the homeless guy. And that yeah. was it. And that was so the whole thing was free and he just had this complete faith. Yeah. The homeless guy was like in tears, he was made up by it. all of a sudden he's got this massive donation of about yeah. eighty quid and and uh, so yeah, it is uh, just like it's like just like I was saying, it's a little comparable anecdote. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. Um